Good morning, hello, and welcome. In this video, I'm going to show you guys how I made my weed eater bike. We finally got it done. Uh, I've been wanting to do this for three years, and then uh, I never had the materials. Now I have the materials, and I got it done in about three days. So we're going to go over how I got everything mounted up, how everything works, why it works, and how you can make your own. So originally, we actually had a foot peg, but then we decided you kind of need to start it. Um, and you need a pedal out to start it, so we put a chain and we got a one by system. American three piece crank, and in the rear we have a Shimano Dura A, so it's a six speed, and just some crap chain in the front because we don't really need anything else. Also, this is a friction drive. So, what happened is this is the throttle. I get a lot of questions on that from random people. This is the throttle, and the throttle cable hooks up here. We're not done yet, but you can see that's the throttle on the carburetor. I fully disassembled and cleaned the carburetor and it was a mess, it was atrocious, um, but I fixed that. And then so for the up and down system, I have a door hinge, I bolted the door hinge and as you can see there's a plate under here, right under there you can see it. And these are all grade A bolts, these ones here, these, are, these ones are grade A bolts. And these are holding in the plate up here with two bolts, one on each side, and that's just basically crushing it. And then next what I said is I said, okay, well, we need a bar that goes up to these L brackets. So I put a grade A bolt here and I put a second bolt here. I put a second bolt here so it couldn't move back and forth. We're trying to do that. We did this without welding. Um, so we did that so it didn't move back and forth and that went well. And this is actually a huge layer of plates because I didn't have any thicker ones. So I think this is four plates here. Then I got a nut and a lock nut on that one. And then you got another grade A bolt over here. And then I bent these L brackets. These L brackets are maybe a quarter inch thick. I bent, I bent them um, by hand. It was really freaking tough, but I did it. And then so we have this one long section of bar that goes from one end of the weed whacker all the way to the end where the turnbuckle is located. So what I did is I took I took a bolt and I put it through this side and a bolt through this side. That means that this can't go like this if only one is hinged because it's resting on both bolts now. Probably this one more than this one. But that's okay. And then for the weed whacker, the actual mounting of the weed whacker, this is gonna be difficult to see, but there's a bolt there. There's a bolt right up over here, behind the gas tank. I'll probably get a better shot for you guys later. But those two bolts bolt into this iron, and actually this one broke yesterday, and I fixed it this morning. I had to take out the, uh, the bolt. And right here, you can see there's a bolt here. This is actually a strengthening plate that comes out over to here under this. So this is a strengthening plate to make it so it doesn't bend anyway. And this is one of those really thick plates. I think that one's a half inch. And then for the peg mounting, the peg was, I think, the most simple part, even though I was really worried about it. If you look inside, um, when, when you disassemble the, the actual weed whacker system, what you do is you put a starter rope up instead of the spark plug, you'd put a starter rope in there, and then you loosen that in there, and that's gonna go ahead and take off the um, oh, I can't remember what it's called, but it, but it pulls off the thing that holds on the line in there. And then what happens is right here, you had the little dogs that caught on the starter. This one, I'm sorry, the lighting really sucks. And then there's a dog right in there. I actually had to shave off the piece and then I just shaved down the, uh, uh, bits with a Dremel and then I had to shave down the inside of the flywheel of the Dremel because the peg wouldn't quite fit. But I made it a real tight fit and then I hammered in the peg and then I tighten that down and that's actually going to self tighten because the peg rotates this way. Now I've already done the math. This is a 1 to 17.33 gear ratio and a 17.33 gear ratio gives it a lot of torque on hills and things like that which is really nice. Um, uh, I disassembled the muffler as well because the muffler was fairly dirty. Inside the gas tank I actually have a proprietary blend since the engine wasn't in the tip top condition that it should have been and if you look inside there's actually on the edge there, there's some little bits of stuff that actually came out. And it's actually more liquidy than bits of stuff, but you can't see it because of the light. I tried to do it in the sunlight here. Inside the gas tank we have two-stroke fuel. Obviously you need that. This is a two-stroke. And on top of that, I have a separate bottle which I mix together a blend of uh, two-stroke fuel, starting fluid, carb cleaner, sea foam. And yeah, that's it. Um, I, I had a lot of sea foam at the beginning and, you know, I want to make sure that the power was up. But I, it's just a little Gatorade bottle and I'll put maybe a couple of drops in there for every time I fill up the tank. The tank's like maybe right there right now. 
that's not a lot of fuel. It burns a lot of fuel really quick, so um, just expect to use a lot of gas. But I mean, it's just such a small gas tank, you could fill it up a lot. And this is a Featherlight, it's a 25cc engine, there's not really a whole lot more to it. And, you know, I'll, I'll obviously get some clips in for riding. Oh yeah, don't let me forget that. Uh, for the tension system to keep the peg on the wheel, I used a turnbuckle. So I took the bike axle and I went ahead and I mounted it up with another grade A bolt on the other side. And this holds that end of the turnbuckle and grade A bolt with three, three lock washers on that side. I've actually had them just rattle off. And you can see there's actually a gap in there. So I just set a relative point um, with that big washer and it just kind of clamps all together and it goes up and down. It's nice because it kind of pulls it in a little bit too. And if you actually look, my weed whacker isn't even centered. It's off to the side. It's rotated that way a little bit. But I mean, it's perfectly okay. It still runs and it's still great. And your peg is going to wear down really fast. Like, there's not a lot left on there. You can see. Um, so that happens. And then for starting, all you got to do is um, switch it down to your full choke like that obviously I know how to start this stuff so you'd switch it down to your full choke and then after you do full choke you'd pedal and you'd fire it up and usually you'll just let it die and after you let die you switch it up to run and then what you're gonna do is you're gonna get some good speed you're gonna throttle up and usually you'll feel it grab and then you'll let go of the throttle and it'll idle and then if you pull the throttle again and it grabs that's how you know that you're good to go you just need to make sure that you're going at a good speed and typically this weed whacker will go at a top of about 15,000 revolutions per minute. That's how fast the flywheel will spin at like top throttle. And I did the math. If we have that plus the 17.33 um, to 1 ratio with the wheel, that's going to give us about 14.4 miles an hour top speed. But yeah, I have managed to go faster than that. So obviously you can go a little bit more. Sometimes it needs a little bit of pedal assist on the hills, but other than that, it's it's really nice and I'm kind of happy that it's done. So here's some riding clips. Yeah. 